Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our breakout session on how to get on TV and radio. Um, so we have uh, 30 minutes together in this breakout session. So let's get started. I am your presenter this afternoon. My name is Flannery Winchester, and I'm CCL's communications director. So part of what I and CCL's other communication staffers do is help volunteers like you get the word out in your local media markets about climate solutions and CCL's work. So today we're going to focus specifically on how to get coverage in your local broadcast outlets. So your local TV stations and your radio stations. First, we'll discuss why that's even worth doing. Uh, and we'll talk about how to actually hook their interest when you reach out. We'll also look at a couple of good examples of what volunteers have generated in recent months on TV and radio. Um, and then we'll open it up for some questions at the end. So please feel free to put your questions in the Q&A tab. Uh, and then you can also upvote someone else's question if you would like to hear the answer too. So we'll have a few minutes for that at the end. So why do we want to try to get on radio and TV? Well, one thing that we know for sure is congressional offices pay close attention to local media. It helps them keep the finger on uh, keep their finger on the pulse of their district or state. So TV and radio are really important channels to help sway your member of Congress to take climate action, which is our ultimate goal. And there are a few reasons specifically TV and radio are promising avenues to pursue right now. The first is that our work is highly relevant right now. Those of you who uh, have been around CCL for a while will remember the years when uh, Congress wasn't talking about climate change in any kind of meaningful way, much less the, the national news media. And that has changed dramatically. There is an ongoing national level story about climate change and climate policy. So you have the opportunity to give your local TV and radio stations a local tie in to that national story. The other reason is that our work is timely. TV and radio are always looking to keep up with the news cycle. And now our work as CCL uh, advocates is popping up in that news cycle. So we're pushing for carbon pricing and new carbon pricing bills are coming out periodically. New members of Congress are regularly signing on as co-sponsors to carbon pricing bills. All that's happening. And so we have lots of timely ways to jump into that broadcast news cycle. And the last big reason is that TV and radio are actually the most popular local news sources above newspapers. So this data um, is from the Pew Research Center and uh, it shows TV and radio up there as the first and the second most popular local sources of news. Uh, and so that confirms that if we want to help sway the climate conversation in our communities, including with our members of Congress, local TV and radio are great places to be. So. Now that we understand we want to be on local TV and radio, let's talk about how to actually hook those stations into wanting to cover our stories. You'll want to send out a press advisory or a press release that includes the, the basic information, the story that you want them to cover. And you may uh, hear this referred to as a pitch. So you first need to just give them the basic info of what's going on, when something is happening, where, all those basic information, uh, basic details. Um, you'll also want to convey relevant timing, give them contact info where they can follow up if they want to pursue the story. But the most crucial parts uh, or ways to increase your chance of success with TV and radio are these next two here. So, because everything I mentioned on that first slide, those are things that you would do even if you were reaching out to a, a newspaper reporter, for example, or maybe a podcast or something. Um, but TV and radio in particular, um, you, you really need to do these two things. So first, you should absolutely identify a spokesperson. This is a really big distinction for TV and radio that separates it from trying to get covered in, in the newspaper. A print reporter can usually take some time to talk to a bunch of different people. They might talk to some people on background. They might talk to other people for quotes actually in the story. Um, and then they write up the story in their own voice. They pick out the quotes they want to use. But TV and radio are moving so much faster. <laughs> um, and so they need to know right off the bat, who can they talk to for this story? Who's going to bring this story to life? Uh, and they also want to know early on, 
is that person compelling enough for them to actually want to pursue the story that you're suggesting? So we need to answer those questions for them in our initial outreach. So for example, imagine that you want to get a TV or radio story about CCL's lobbying push next week. You wanna think about who from your chapter is lobbying and consider if any of them have areas of particular expertise or maybe have any interesting personal profiles and then you can build a pitch around them as the spokesperson. So let's say you have uh, someone in your chapter who runs a local business. You could pitch TV and radio stations on a story about how several national businesses or business groups have endorsed climate action and carbon pricing in recent months. Danny was mentioning some of those in the, in the opening plenary session. Um, and so you could mention that and then say, this local business owner shares that same view and is actually meeting with congressional offices on June 15th or whenever to ask for action. So you can then offer TV and radio stations the chance to interview that local business owner about their perspective and what they're saying to Congress. Or for another example, maybe you have a high school or a college student in your chapter. You could pitch TV and radio stations on a story about how young people have really surged to the forefront of climate advocacy in recent years. And for one young person here in your city, that means meeting with members of Congress directly. And so you can offer up that young person as the spokesperson uh, and you can uh, give TV and radio stations the chance to interview that young volunteer about why they're advocating for climate policy, what they're saying to Congress. Um, so that's the idea of identifying a spokesperson. You definitely want to do that when you're trying to approach TV and radio. And then you also want to make sure that the spokesperson, uh, this is just a to cover your bases, you do want to make sure that that spokesperson is aware that you're offering them up uh, and that that person is open to speaking with media if you do get responses to your pitch. Um, and so then the second thing here that you uh, want to keep in mind as something that could, could help put you over the top, could help your pitch be successful, is you want to make it easy for the TV or radio station to get the secondary materials that they need for their story, like visuals or audio. So this is fairly easy with radio because they can get audio over a phone call. Um, and even TV is a little easier than it used to be because stations are more used to holding Zoom calls with guests. But TV stations often still like to have what they call B-roll, which is just extra footage to sort of fill out a segment uh, and show other related visuals. So if you have any relevant video clips that you can share, uh, or maybe photos of your spokesperson, go ahead and select your best options and include those with the initial pitch because that's gonna help your contact envision how the piece could come together, what it could look like, um, and it will make it more likely that they will take you up on your pitch and want to cover your story. Um, because really, just like, just like all of us, TV and radio stations are uh, well, and the journalists who work at them are busy, they're pulled in a lot of directions, they have a lot of information coming at them. Um, and so the easier we can make it for them to say, oh yes, I know the spokesperson here, I can use this video to, to put together the package, this is an easy story that I can pursue, I'll go ahead and, and take them up on this pitch. Um, so that's, that's what we're trying to do here. Um, so if you have photos of your spokesperson or your chapter members from past lobby meetings, maybe a video of that person giving a presentation or photos from tabling events, things like that. Those are great. Um, now, if you don't have any visuals easily on hand, um, you could just let the reporter know where they could get visuals for the piece. So this is still a little tough as we emerge from the pandemic, but hopefully further into the summer, there will be opportunities like tabling events, uh, chapter meetings, and things like that, where members of the press could actually come by and film or interview the spokesperson there. And then um, if, you, if none of those are feasible options right now, uh, you can actually select one of the videos on CCL Community that our marketing team has produced. They've done some nice videos that show volunteers on uh, like walking around Capitol Hill, walking into congressional offices, um, attending conference activities, that sort of thing. 
Um, and so you can look at those videos and see if there's anything useful there um, that, that ties into the story you're pitching. And you can offer those up to the stations and see if they can, uh, can pick things out of that or if that just helps them uh, understand the story that you're, uh, that you're moving toward. So once you've got all those materials together, you'll need to know where to send them. Typically, you want to be able to move pretty quickly when you have a broadcast media opportunity. I mentioned before, they're, they're in that daily news cycle. They're, they're looking for content uh, all the time and quickly. So, um, so I would recommend that you take these steps uh, ahead of time. So first, identify your local TV and radio stations so you know where you want to get coverage. Um, and so, for example, so I'm in Atlanta, and we have a, uh, an NPR affiliate here. So that would be a target for me. I would think, oh, I'd like to be on uh, 90.3 WABE. So that would be one of, my, uh, one of my outlets that I would want to include on my local media list. Um, so think about the stations where you want to get coverage and then find the right contacts at those outlets. So these could be the reporters or the journalists themselves who you've noticed are covering environmental issues, covering climate issues, maybe covering Congress. Um, and then you could also look at producers or assignment editors. So it, it varies depending on the station and will probably require a little bit of research. Um, on your part, but you can look at past stories that, uh, that deal with these topic issues, um, and you can see what you can glean about which staffers were involved in making that story happen. Um, so, uh, so look around a little bit to find uh, the right reporters or journalists, uh, or maybe some of the, the more background staff who might be involved, um, and then try to identify their contact information, usually from the station's website, um, and add those folks to your local press list. So this is, again, this is something you'll want to do uh, before you actually have a pitch. So this is something you could do uh, this weekend if you want. If you feel inspired by this uh, presentation, you could go um, and start to do this research and start to build out your version of your local press list. Um, and then one other just quick tip, something that can help you build relationships with these journalists and spot opportunities to pitch them is to follow those contacts on Twitter. Most journalists these days are on Twitter. Um, so the next question is, when do you actually send out stuff to that local press release or that local press list and try to get a story? So there are a few key moments that should sort of prick up your ears and make you think, hmm, this seems like a good chance to pitch TV and radio. Uh, so local events that your chapter is involved with or is hosting, that's a big one because there's a natural opportunity for good visuals. Anytime there's a climate related event in the community that, that you or your chapter are involved in, definitely consider pitching TV and radio to come out and see it, participate in it, um, and then interview someone from your chapter while they're uh, while they're there. Endorsements are another big moment because there's usually a very clear spokesperson. So for example, imagine that your city council passes a resolution endorsing carbon pricing. And maybe you know that one of those city councilors would be willing to speak on the record about the policy, about the resolution. Um, if that's the case, then you would definitely want to pitch your TV and radio list and offer up that endorser as a spokesperson to, to talk about that story. Uh, conferences and lobby days are also good moments, as we've discussed, because they connect to that larger national narrative about climate change uh, and climate policy. And here I'd suggest trying to find some kind of a, a local angle or a human interest angle that will help the story come to life. So your spokesperson, for example, could be like a busy working mom who still finds time to meet with Congress about climate change or something like that, that, that makes it feel a little more human, brings it to life a little bit rather than just saying a conference happened. Um, and finally, when your member of Congress takes some kind of action, that is a great moment to pitch TV and radio with a sort of a reaction from the community story so it, that would give you a chance to praise your member of Congress for stepping up or for speaking out. Um, and it would reinforce that regular folks in the community support that action from your representative or your senator. So those are a few times when you would want to, uh, want to try for TV and radio coverage. 
Um, and we do have templates available on CCL Community to help you with the actual press release part. Um, so these, this is a, uh, these are screenshots from the local press release templates page on CCL Community. Um, but basically, you can download the, uh, the template that's right for your scenario. You can fill in local details and otherwise tailor that document to your needs. And uh, you'll find when you reach out to your press list that you, you need to write a little email to basically say, hi, I'm so-and-so, here's a tip for you about a potential story and someone local that you might want to interview for it. So the spokesperson information that we talked about earlier, that will go uh, in that initial part of the email. Um, and then you can say, I've included a press release below with more information. And that's where you give them all those details, the, the who, what, when, where, why, all of that uh, in a more sort of expanded way. Um, and so you can just copy and paste the press release below that short, friendly opening message that you send to the contact. Um, so those press release templates are on CCL Community for you to access, and we keep those updated fairly regularly. So then after you've reached out, what happens next? Well, don't be surprised if you have to follow up. Reporters get a lot of outreach and they're moving quickly. So feel free to give just a quick phone call to your contact to check that they got your email and ask if they plan to cover the story. And just like with anything, you don't want to pester them. Uh, one or two nudges is enough. But if they are interested, then they will set up a time to talk with you or with your spokesperson or to come film. Um, and so you'll need to make sure that your spokesperson is prepared to give an effective interview. And that's a whole different training. <laughs> we don't have time, unfortunately, to go deep into that today. Um, but we do have guidance for interviews on CCL Community as well. Uh, and then ultimately, the coverage will air. So after the story is out, you can then extend the reach of that story by posting it, posting about it on social media. You can share it with the relevant CCL liaison so that they can make absolutely sure the congressional office sees it. Um, and you can also log it in the action tracker. So uh, now I want to show you a couple examples of radio and TV coverage that our volunteers have generated. So this, this one is a radio story from Jacksonville, Florida earlier this year. And I will actually drop the link in the chat um, so that you can pull it up. But basically, the Chamber of Commerce updated its stance on climate policy earlier this year. And they said they were open to a market-based climate solution like a carbon tax. And uh, so shout out to our volunteer, Adam Rosenblatt, down in Jacksonville. He emailed a press release to this reporter offering a local reaction to the news, local uh, take on it. And so you can see that the, the headline here is, Jack's groups praise U.S. Chamber of Commerce's new stance on climate change. Uh, and so CCL is discussed in the, the audio piece that you can hear on that page. And then Adam is quoted directly in the written version of the story. Very, very cool hit, very successful uh, radio uh, story. So then here is a TV story that our Wisconsin volunteers generated in Jan January of this year. And this is a, a nice local segment in advance of a city council vote on a resolution endorsing uh, climate action at the national level. So I'll also drop this one in the chat so you can check that one out. Um, and but you can see that, you know, the headline very specific to, to what we're doing, a call to end climate change. And then here, Dan Barth is um, he's the group leader there and uh, served in this instance. He served as the spokesperson to talk about. Uh, talk about CCL's work and about this resolution they were working on. Um, so now we have time for a few questions. We have just over 10 minutes. Um, so Sarah, what are you seeing in the Q&A? Um, let's start with this question from Judith who says, can you pitch the same story to multiple outlets simultaneously? That's a great question, Judith. So yes, absolutely. Um, we and I, if I'm interpreting your question right, um, I imagine that you've heard us say that you don't want to send the same op-ed, for example, to multiple newspapers all at once. You kind of want to go one at a time. Um, that is not the case with press releases or with pitches. 
you can send a press release and you can suggest the idea of a story to as many reporters as you want to all at once. That is totally fine. Um, and and part of part of the reason is because um, reporters have a lot to choose from that they can that they can cover. And so it's there's going to be a lower rate of response and a lower rate of success, I hate to say, <laughs> um, when you when you reach out with a pitch. And so um, so it doesn't hurt at all to cast your net really wide and see who you can get a bite from. So yes, you can definitely pitch the same story to multiple outlets at the same time. All right. Our next question is, is there an action team for TV and radio stuff? Good question. So there is not an action team because this is one of the Media work is one of the core five levers of political will that CCL volunteers try to pull. So um, we actually have dedicated staff support for folks who want to work on media. And so if you are interested in doing more, I would say um, let your group leader know or let me know that you want to be designated as a media manager. Um, because if you, and that sounds very official, <laughs> but all it means is that you are kind of raising your hand and you're saying, I want to do some kind of media work in my chapter. Can you please send me guidance? Can you invite me to support calls? Can you give me ideas about what I can be working on right now? Um, and all of that is stuff that we, that my team and I provide to the CCL media managers. So rather than having an action team, I would say just designate yourself um, or let me know that you want to be designated as a media manager, and then you will get in the flow for all of those uh, support materials. Awesome. Thank you, Flannery. Um, so this question is from Harry, who says, when you know the reporter or an editor about a story, whether they will cover the story, what's the most effective means of communication, email, phone call, or other? That is a really good question. So it depends a lot on the reporter. And so this is something that you will get a sense of as you talk to your list more. Um, so I think the best way I can explain this is to talk to you about how I handle the, the national list. So there are some national climate reporters who are very responsive over email. And I know that if I email them, I will hear back from them. There are some national reporters who I text with more than I email. Um, there's one who has only ever responded to me through Twitter direct messaging <laughs> and won't ever answer my emails. So um, it really depends on the reporter. And so I would suggest if you if you can tell just from working with them, if you can tell they have a, a preference for how they communicate, do that. But if you're not sure, it's totally fine to ask, um, especially if they've given you some indication that they're interested in what you're offering them. Um, you can just clarify, um, hey, would it be easier for you if I give you a quick phone call next time? Or do, does email work okay? Um, so that's that's always fine to ask because you're, you're helping them by being more uh, communicative in a way that, that works better for them. So don't, don't hesitate to ask. Yes, and on that note, I have two uh, related questions. Does the ask if it's effective to um, ask the reporter or producer for a meeting to pitch the story? And Harry asked, how do you develop a working relationship with a reporter or editor? Yeah, good, very good questions. So um, I would offer a meeting if they have indicated some interest. So I wouldn't start off with a request for a meeting with a reporter just because they're, again, like they're moving so quickly and trying to cover so much that they they probably won't take a meeting unless they think a topic is worth pursuing. So I would still start off with the with an initial pitch and say, are you interested in this area? Are you interested in this uh, this topic? And then if they say yes, then you can say, great, let's set up a, you know, they may want to move straight to an interview, or you could say, I'm happy to chat with you further to give you more background about this story and, and let you know our, you know, more about our spokespeople or something like that. So you can kind of gauge that, but I wouldn't start off by asking for a meeting. I would start off by giving them a catchy pitch that makes them think, oh yeah, I do want to take time on this. I do want to devote some energy to pursuing this story. Um, and then Harry's question, yeah, how do you develop a working relationship with a reporter or an editor? Um, so we've talked a lot about 
pitches uh, in this breakout session. Um, and a pitch really is you saying to them, hey, cover me and my thing. <laughs> um, but one thing that you can do to build a, a good relationship is to also offer the reporter things that are not just related to you and your stuff. Um, so if you, and this, this idea is um, the idea of you wanna be both a source, but you also wanna be a resource for journalists. So, um, so what that could look like is if, if you're really plugged into the, the local climate and environment and sustainability scene in your town, um, maybe when there's an interesting event going on, even if your CCL chapter isn't involved, even if you're not, you know, you're not a speaker at the event or anything like that, but it's just, you think it's a worthwhile event, you could send a tip to that reporter and say, hey, I know this relates to your beat. I know this relates to the type of stories that you try to cover. Just wanted to make sure you had seen this event was happening in case it was helpful for you. Um, and so that's an example of the kind of stuff that will lead a reporter to value your outreach to them because they know you're not always just pestering them saying, hey, do a story about me, do a story about me, but you're actually giving them good information that helps them do their job better. Um, and so that's always a good a good way to build a, a working relationship with a reporter and editor. And another thing that I would say on that is um, just like how when you're looking through your chapter and trying to pick out who might be a good spokesperson, um, you can also just email reporters and say, hey, if you ever need a source for a story that, um, you know, if you, if you ever need a scientist that can talk about, you know, hurricanes or increasing heat or something like that, um, I can, I'd be happy to connect you with so and so, Dr. So-and-so over here at the, the university, you know, like you can let them know when you have um, connections like that, because again, that's what a reporter needs to do their job well. And so if they see you as someone who can offer that, then that will help, uh, that will benefit your working relationship with that that reporter. All right, thank you, Flannery. And we're getting close to the top of the hour, so this is probably gonna be the last question that we have time for. So after this question, go ahead and let us know where people can go to get any additional questions that they have after this call answered. But Zane asked, what would be CCL's stance on going to a TV station as sponsored content? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think that's fine if you, um, I mean, sponsored content to me implies you're having to pay money to be there. Um, and so if that's a way that you want to use your resources, then I think that's okay. Um, it could potentially help you get a foot in the door um, with the with a station, but I, um, I wouldn't say that you need to feel compelled to, to do that. If you don't have resources to, to go that avenue, then uh, what we call earned media is absolutely a, uh, a good way to go. Um, but yeah, I think that's fine to, to participate if that's a way that you um, feel comfortable and, uh, and have the resources to do that, then that, uh, that seems fine. All right, well, thank you all so much for, uh, for these great questions. And so we are almost at the end of our time. So I apologize if we couldn't get to everyone's questions, um, but feel free to reach out to me uh, directly at flannery at citizensclimate.org. I'll put my email there in the chat. Um, and then you can also post questions in the media relations forum on CCL community anytime. Uh, and I will get back to you there promptly. And then I'll also be floating around the conference uh, for the rest of the day. So if you see me at a table, feel free to pull up a chair and chat further uh, and ask me any questions about anything that we've, uh, that we've covered here. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for listening to this episode of Citizens Climate Lobby's training program. You can tune into more episodes anywhere podcasts are available. Inspired by what you heard today? Join Citizens Climate Lobby to advocate for bipartisan climate solutions. Go to community.citizensclimate.org to find more trainings, resources, your local chapter, national action teams, discussion forums, and more. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Citizens Climate. We also invite all of our listeners to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more inspiration. And together, we are creating the political will for a livable world.